Thanks, Patricia. God bless your heart. Wasn't that good? Bart did an excellent job officiating that. I mean, listen, I could, I could feel a spirit of excellence on that. I could feel the Holy Ghost wooing and brooding over that. That was wonderful. And with Rodney a lot up and down the land in meetings and watched him function and flow. Well, we're glad you're here. I like Sister A. I'm just going to call her Sister A. I like Sister A. She's got the goods. Well, I ought to say the goods have her. That's what it is. She's packed and loaded. That's wonderful. I'm telling you, that's wonderful. Brilliant, but that's not where the power comes from. The power comes from within. It really is. God's showing her wonderful things for the body of Christ and for the kingdom of God. I hope that you'll uh, visit the book tables and get these uh, people's resources. Steve has some marvelous stuff. Wasn't that good today when we begin to sing about there's only one? Oh, angels come to see if we really mean it. Do you believe that? I mean, listen, they'll come, they'll gather, they'll, they'll fill this room. And I'm telling you, if you think we come by ourselves, you don't know much. I'm telling you, the angels of heaven come. They've taken pictures of them on the platform with us. I want a God that'll show up and show off, don't you? I do. I tell you what, uh, we can't continue to talk about a God we can't prove. The early church could prove him. Remember Mark 16, 20? They went everywhere and proclaimed and God what? Validated and vindicated what was said with signs following. I like signs and wonders. God does the sign, me and you do the wondering. Going, whoa, what in the world was that? <laughs> yeah, I told you I've been preaching 44 years. I've averaged speaking five times a week for 44 years. Here's what I figured out after all of that. You ready? If you can figure it out, it's not a move of God. That's what I figured out. That's what the Bible teaches. If you can naturally, intellectually figure out a move of God, it's not a move of God. Because the Bible said the natural mind, that's the one that says between our ears, the natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. It's foolish to it. It can't comprehend it. It must be spiritually ingested. And so you can't figure it out with the natural mind. So we got to just, uh, sometimes I suspect we're going to have to become... Uh, more childlike to receive the things of God. Somewhere I read, except you become as a little child, you'll not see or enter the kingdom. That's, our, that's what we're wanting to do, see and enter the kingdom. So we may have to digress in order to advance. You believe that? May have to digress in order to advance. Become like a child. Now, not childish. We're enough like that. My ministry, my church, my... No, nah, that's childish. We need to be childlike. You believe that? World of difference. World of difference. Well, I hope you'll visit the book table. I done told you that, but listen, we, we brought some of the shepherd's rods from, uh, uh, this is the one for 2011. Now you write them a year in advance. And I want to show you, let me just show you uh, some of these that have been fulfilled. Uh, on page 33 of the one for 20, 2011, it says China and Russia coalition. Soon it will be revealed that China and Russia have begun forming a shaky alliance. This alignment will be for the purpose of world domination. They will truly be odd bedfellers. They will extend invitations for other rogue nations and countries uh, such as Iran to join their cause. Neither can be trusted. Has that unfurled? Yes, sir, it has. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this is still on, on page um, 34. European Union. The European Union will prove to be extremely fragile. Much of Europe will commence to come apart. We could be seeing the decline of the so-called European Union. Has that come to pass? Say, so, yes, it has. Right? You can turn on your TV and see it. Here's one right here. Number four, firestorm in the Middle East. Uh, I heard a strong word, firestorm in the Middle East. Jerusalem and Israel had their biggest fire in their history. They had to call other nations to help them come put it out. But I was referring to this, to a nuclear exchange. But uh, God sent them a firestorm, remember that? Say so yes, then oh, okay. Well, anyway, a lot of stuff. Turbulence, one of the definitions of turbulence is instability in, and then in the atmosphere. And we saw more tornadoes in 2011. It was, a, it was a unheard of, the amount and the, the ve velocity of these tornadoes. But there it is written on page uh, 35. And then here's one, silent invasion. 
Uh, we've been sitting asleep while we've been silently invaded uh, by a very hostile, hostile movement. And then I, I put number nine, new life forms will be discovered. Expect, expect to receive reports concerning discovery of new life forms in deep waters and in the oceans and in distant mountains and rivers. Shocking revelations will emerge in the area of micro cells. See, that's you. See, that's right. And then, okay, well, anyway, then it says there's going to be a much needed breakthrough. See, what I'm trying to say to you is these are not just ideas. These are words that God gave us, and he'll fulfill them. And I'll tell you what Bob Jones said. Bob Jones says what we prophesied in 2008 had been put on delay, but it's accessible right now. I'll tell you what I prophesied in 2008. I prophesied that there was coming a kingdom company that's going to be baptized with a fresh baptism of love, and they're going to rule the visible realm from the invisible realm. And Bob Jones said that's accessible this year. And so get after it. And then, okay, here, here's the one for 2010. So they're back there. I, I think they got a mark for $6. We'll run them for five or whatever. Whatever is easy. Okay, that's easy for me. Uh, all right. Now here's, this, this is, now so we wrote this in 20, uh, 2009. You write it a year in advance for the, the coming year. So listen what happens here. Uh, and I write about Israel being threatened, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And so here's what I said. Uh, if we turn our backs on Israel, if the United States sides with Israel's enemy and agrees to divide Jerusalem, we must prepare for a national devastation on a level we have never seen before on our shores. Did anything happen on our shores this year? The oil, you know, the pipeline, uh, oil well erupted back there, messed up a lot of the ocean. See, there, there's something in here. So you'll read that, won't you? Do uh, you like to read? You're sure welcome to these. God bless your heart. Uh, you ought to give me one. Hey! <laughs> I'll be up here talking that, that whizzy stuff, man. <sighs> Did I tell you, I walked by a woman once. I was in a meeting and I walked by a woman and as I walked by her, I, I felt the, the intelligence this woman had. My whole mind went like the Matrix movie. Remember when that screen, it went... And I said, woman, you're the smartest woman I've ever seen in my life. She had two double doctorate degrees on quantum physics and the mechanics of quantum physics. That's a, yeah, and she had written the manual they were studying at a university. And, but then I said to her, that's not your greatest call. Your greatest call is to minister to the kids in this church. She falls on the floor, starts flopping like a fish because she had just resigned the university to come to that church and start working in the children's department. But she had double doctorate's degrees in quantum physics and the mechanic of, mechanics of quantum physics. I took Algebra 1 two times a day for four years. <laughs> so I said to her, if you need somebody to converse with on your level, I'm your man. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Algebra 1 two times a day for four years. But I figure as long as Walmart's got calculators, why do we need all that stuff? You know, just... Just figure it out. Well, anyway, I'm going to talk to you about the anointing in a moment, but I'm, I'm busy talking to you about these books right now. This book right here started 38 years ago. Actually, uh, when, I, when I wrote it, it had started 38 years ago. It's more like 41 years now. But I'll tell you what happened. My wife and I had been invited to go to, uh, as guests to a, a, a special meeting they were having at a church. And so we're sitting out there. Remember, this is 40-something uh, years ago. I'm a young, fiery preacher, just, just, just going wild. And so I'm sitting out there, and they invite the visiting evangelist to come, the speaker. And they brought him in on a, in, in a side door, and he shuffled his way up a sh sh shuffle like this. And I punched my wife, and I said, Hey, let's go. I've got more to do than listen to an old man ramble. So here's what Carolyn said. She said, Bobby, please don't cause a scene. She said, we're already here. Let's just wait. So he sits down. They sing a few more stanzas of a song. They introduce the speaker, and he, he gets up, and they give him a small, subdued applause, and he makes his way to the pulpit. I punch Carolyn like, see? Here's what he does. This is the honest to God, absolute truth. Ooh, he stood behind the pulpit, snow white suit, snow white hair, piercing blue eyes, 
and they turned a white light on him from up above in a spotlight. And I vow to you, he looked angelic. And he grasped the pulpit like this. And here's what he said. He said, may we pray. Patricia, when he said that, the whole room became electric. I've listened to thousands and thousands of messages since that night. But I've never heard a message like this one. So this book is an echo of what I heard 38 years ago. I'll tell you what he did. I have never till this moment heard people paint word pictures like he did. He talked about, uh, it's about Nabob's vineyard. It's a talking about Ahab taking over Nabob's vineyard and Jezebel having Nabob killed. And it's talking about the justice of God. It's talking about no matter what atrocity has been leveled against you, God is a God of justice. And God will rectify things. And so, oh, he preached. He preached with such an anointing. You could smell the sweat on the horses. You could smell the leather on the, on the bridles. You could hear the horses' hooves as they pounded down down the road. You could feel the wind as it blew through Nate Bob's vineyard. Boy, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what happened to me, though. I listened to this man preach like a man from another world. And then when it was over, I made my way out, and I thought, I'll come down, and I'll, I'll, I'll greet him and talk with him. And as I walked by, he said to me, he said, son, give me your Bible. And I handed him my Bible, and he pulled out a pen with a shaky hand, and he wrote, Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord together. Let us exalt his name. And he pinned his name, Dr. R.G. Lee. I was listening to a world-famous preacher preach a message about God's goodness and about God's just, justice. I hope you'll get this. Uh, we need the justice of God. We need it. We've never seen such injustice. But I'll tell you what, God's going to balance it. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible right now is Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, the Lord is good. Uh, he said he's a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. So uh, who will who, read this book if I'll give it to him? Okay, well, this dear lady said she would. God bless your heart. Uh, i tell you what, uh, uh, there's some stuff in it, man. Don't you want the justice of God? A lot of people are calling out about the judgment of God. But I'll tell you what, he's a God of justice, Sidney. He's going to rectify every wrong that's been uh, given against you. He really is. I was fussing one day, you know, preachers do that. I was fussing a few years ago about these exuberant, exorbitant uh, salaries that some of these guys are getting to play basketball and football. Man, and, and I was fussing about that. And God told me, said, uh, that I'm paying them back for all the atrocities of slavery. Look out now. Michael Jordan getting, what, $60 million to shoot a basketball? God said, quit fussing about it. I'm paying him back. He'll do right by us. You believe that? Say yes. yes. I'll tell you what, you better watch out. When prophets come to town, they'll tell you the truth, and you'll have to rewrite your whole history. <laughs> Honest to God, truth. I was up in Canada, and I said, oh, y'all in trouble. You've taken the into an Indian's uh, land. You're going to have to redraw your maps and give them back their land. They hissed at me, but guess what they had to do? Give back the Indians their land and redraw their maps. That's true. That's true. Check it out. Well, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we're here on a mission. We're on, here, uh, we're on a mission to mess you up. Hey, you know, I'll tell you a little story. Did you hear about the farmer that every year he would bring his mule to the Kentucky Derby? Remember that? This old farmer, you know the Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby, they bring these exquisite horses, magnificent trailers, some are flown in on, on cargo planes, etc., like that. But this old farmer, every year he'd load up his old long-eared long -eared mule, long hairs and hard-looking old mule, and bring him to the Kentucky Derby. Every year he'd come in last. And these slick guys, they got sick of it. They, they go, listen, he's cramping our style. Every year he unloads that old mule out of a smoking pickup, and we're just sick of him showing up with that thing. Sure enough, here he comes up the road, old truck a-spittering and a-sputtering, old mule hanging his head over the side. So as he's unloading his mule, these, these spokesmen for these elite uh, guys said, now listen, every year you bring him. Every year, every year he comes in dead last. Why do you keep on bringing him? Old farmer spit a little bit. They do that, you know. <laughs> Stuck his thumb in his overalls and he said this. Well, I figure the association's going to do him some good. <laughs> mm. 
Now think about that. This service is going to do both of us good. Association is going to do them some good. Here's your one. Did you hear about the old, old man? He loved to walk. He's really, really old, but he loved, they call him a constitutional. Remember when old people used to walk for health? Yeah. Now they got trainers and aerobics and all that kind of stuff. I mean, my grandmother didn't know anything about aerobics. She didn't have a personal trainer. She just picked cotton till, from daylight till dark, had nine kids in the kitchen. You know, you don't need a personal trainer then. You know what I mean? This is true. Well, anyway, this old man, he loved to walk. He loved to walk. And so one, one day he's walking down the trail and a little frog hops out there, just a very small little frog. And the old man saw him and the frog spoke to him. And the frog said, sir, if you'll pick me up, kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful maiden. Remember, he's old. He's frail and fragile. He goes, huh? Frog said it again, sir, if you pick me up, and kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful maiden. The old guy's eyes sparkled a little and go, oh, oh, oh. And he picked him up. And the frog said again, sir, if you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful maiden. So the man stuffs him in his pocket and he starts back down the trail. And the little frog struggled and said, sir, didn't you hear me? If you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful maiden. The old man chuckled and said, at my age, a talking frog is more valuable. <laughs> Whoa! Think about that just for a moment. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay, okay. See, I liven up when Patricia leaves, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the beginning. Hey! Let's talk about another one. Did you hear about the young preacher? He was up preaching and he was a real good Bible student. And here's what he'd say. He'd say, and the Bible says. And there was a heckler in the crowd. And every time the young preacher said, and the Bible said, the heckler go, I don't believe a word of that. And boy, the young preacher kind of get his composure back. And he'd start back preaching again. And sure enough, he'd go, and the Bible says, the heckler would say, I don't believe a word of that. Finally, the little preacher, he'd had all that he could stand. So he said, sir. Would you come down here? And here came the heckler. I mean, he came strutting down there, shoulders bowed and all chest all stuck out. And the little frail kind of preacher said, Sir, if I can get you to believe in one verse in the Bible, will you believe all the rest of them are true? The skeptic goes, Yeah, I guess. So he said, Come a little closer. So the man came a little closer. He thought it was going to be a confrontation of some sort. So the preacher said, come a little closer. So he came a little closer, and he reached over, and he got him by the nose. And he turned it this way, turned it this way, turned it this way, let it go. Blood just shot everywhere. And the preacher quoted from the Bible, as surely as the churning of the milk brings forth butter, the ringing of the nose brings forth blood. Yeah. Did you know that's in the Bible? It is. It's Proverbs 30, 33. Proverbs 30, verse 33. As sure as the churning of the milk brings forth butter, the ringing of the nose brings forth blood. That's true. You'd be surprised what you can get by with if you know the Bible. Whoo, here's one. I was invited to India. And we had a great, great meeting and some dignitaries came and all this kind of stuff. So they set up this big, big, elaborate banquet for us. And it was wonderful, honestly. They, they were bending over backwards to show hospitality and honor and stuff like this. And so we're at this big banquet and it's kind of dark in there. And so uh, they, they, this, they had this big, big, big uh, elaborate ceremony to bring in this special, this special thing that the guy that they were honoring was supposed to consume and they bring it in and they set it in front of me remember it's kind of dark in there and it i saw it had ice around it. and at first i thought maybe it was oysters or something like that and then steve my eyes were adjusting a little more and i looked and i thought my god i see ears <laughs> it was a monkey head 
a monkey head. You go and pull the thing off and then eat out of the monkey head. A big old sour ball rose up in my throat. So I said to this gentleman, see, it's a big honor. And I said to him, sir, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And I would be so pleased if you would receive this. And they all applauded. They were so elated. And boy, I was going, whee oh man. Didn't have to eat monkey head. Yeah, isn't that something? <sighs> God will help you if you listen. You believe that? He will. He will. Okay. I told you I'd finish Granny's chicken story. Remember I told you all that? Anybody here that wasn't here this morning when I told about? Well, anyway, I was a young kid down there at my grandmother's house in Texas, and they soaked corn cobs in a kerosene. And corn cobs are like a redneck uh, uh, frisbee sort of. You know what I mean? Something to chunk. They're very unique. You know, the Aussies have these boomerangs. Well, uh, boys in Texas have corn cobs. And you know what? And so you can chunk them. They go, whoo, whoo. And so I'm out in my granny's yard, and here's a chicken. She's got chickens everywhere. Wah, wah. Yeah, they're, you know, and they're just running across the yard, making these funny sounds. And so uh, I, I got to thinking. I was good at chunking corn cobs, and I thought, you know, I bet I can hit one of them. So one of them's trucking along there about, I don't know, 40 yards, maybe 30 yards. And they go, whoo, 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 whoo. And the corn cob hits the chicken right in the head. Kaboom. It's awful. <laughs> he flopped and flittered and around. So I go up there and pick him up just dead, just dead. And I thought, oh, my God, I'd kill Granny's chicken. So I'm going to carry it up to the fence row and bury it. So I go up the fence row. There's leaves there, so I kick out a grave, and I bury the chicken. And so I go down to, to the house to try to deceive my grandmother. Now, I'll tell you about Granny. You can't deceive her. She's sharp. She's got this something about her. So she's over there washing dishes, and so I'm sneaking in. Remember she had that screen door? How did the screen door go? Yeah. You know, you don't need a home alarm or a burglar alarm, just. <laughs> so in I'm coming, and I'm trying to act like nothing happened. I'm trying to ease on past Granny, and Granny goes, what's wrong, boy? And I just spill my guts. I just, you know, oh, Granny, I didn't mean to. You know, just poured out my guts to Granny, you know. And Granny, guess what she did? She didn't go, my God, get me some Valium. Never seen a kid like this. You know, I didn't stress her out. She didn't freak out and have to run off to a yoga class. <laughs> no, she didn't need all that. She had peace already. So she just dried her little hands like this and says, don't worry. We'll go get it and cook it for dinner. So I thought, boy, that's going to work. So here me and Granny go. Y'all didn't know Granny, did you? <laughs> Granny and I start up to the fence row. We start up there, and sure enough, we get there. There's been a resurrection. <laughs> the grave's empty. <laughs> Honest to God. Leaves are scattered. No chicken. I said, Granny, he was right here. You know, ah. And then, way down there by the hog pasture, See, somebody ought to be on some music going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know how suspense is, don't you? Boy, remember the Jaws movie? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. My God, you want to get out of the bathtub? <laughs> Play me something, man. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yeah. The chicken. Go ahead. <laughs> Cooking. Here's what happens. We hear this sound coming from the hog pasture. It's the chicken. He's out of his mind. He's down in the hog pasture. Hog pasture. Turn him up. My God, turn him up. The hog pasture. 
pasture. Nobody in their right mind would go in the hog pasture. Chains around the gate. You know what's in the hog pasture? Hogs! Oh, they got tusks coming out this. Hogs! H! H! Yeah. Hogs! Yeah. Can't you see them? Razor sharp tusk. Little beady eyes. You can hear them, they start snapping their tusks together. That's it. And here's what Granny said. We gotta go get her, boy. Before the hogs do. Now listen, I'm not afraid of much. I'm scared of the hog pasture. I mean, you better carry a club, a gun, something. Not Granny. And there's a chain around the gate. You pick it up and you better be quiet. If there's any rattling, that's the dinner bell for the hogs. Hogs! Hogs! I can't keep my man cute. Sinister, can you see it? Dangerous. Fearful. Absolutely horrifying for a young boy. <laughs> See? Bart Patricia shouldn't have left us. You know when mama's out of the house, the boys are going to play. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's happened. Sister, we're blaming it on you. I said, you know, listen. We're... Anyway, honest to God. Me and Granny go down into the hog pasture with all that fearful stuff and captured the chicken. Granny took care of the chicken, plucked it, and we had a chicken dinner. See, now I could have been traumatized, but you can tell I'm not. Granny could have just come unglued at the seams and go, Boy, you're always tearing up something. But Granny wasn't that way. Did you know Granny was old the first time I saw her and she's uh, old the last time I saw her? She never aged. You know, it's the strangest thing. She was old when I first saw her. She was old the last time I saw her. Yeah, that's true. That was good. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Now then. I know it. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not one bit sorry. <sighs> they keep this up. We'll go on the road. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought prophets were supposed to have big old long fingers and bushy eyebrows and come into a meeting and do this. Yeah, not me. We just hang out and see what God wants to do. You know what he said? He said, you amuse me. That's what he told me. One, well, that's true. That's what he told me. He said, you amuse me. Yeah. One time, uh, I was whining to him. He called it whining. You call it inter intercession, but he called it whining. I was going, God, why do you make me do so many silly things? I thought he'd cuddle me and go, Bobby, you're a champion. Guess what he said to me? I've never presented you as stupid as you really are. That's what he said. Yeah. Then he said, you don't even know what you're talking about. Then he said, have you considered the Old Testament prophets? Did you study about them? Nobody in their right mind would want to go camping with Ezekiel. Not if he was cooking. Uh, you'll find that out in the Bible. Said Jeremiah came into the council meeting in a diaper. A linen rag. And then what about poor old Hosea? Had to marry a girl named Gomer that was a hooker. Remember that? I said, God, 
<laughs> the name would have been bad enough, let alone the occupation. This is my wife, Gomer, you know. <laughs> Gomer, yeah. This is pretty. She did a great job doing this, didn't she? That's right. So you're doing okay? It's going to be all right, isn't it? What's your name? Laura. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I used to pray, oh, God, give me their name. God said, they know their name. Tell them something they don't know. That's right. It's true. So he wants to tell you some things, okay? One is he'll talk to you. You don't think he'll talk to you. He'll talk to you. I'm talking about God. God will talk to you. That's true. John 10, 3, my sheep will hear my voice. So you will hear, you will hear his voice. You believe that? That's true. That's what he said. He said to tell you, you're not waiting on him. He said, he's turned the light green. I'm talking to this guy right here in the white shirt. He said, the light's green. That's right. That's right. The light's green. It's all go for you. Go on. Go on. Well, I lost my acoustics or whatever that was. I like T.D. Jakes and them. They got somebody playing something, man. You say something halfway good. Us white guys, we don't even have a CD going, you know. Just, just, just have to do it off the cuff, don't we? Well, I better quit cutting up and start talking to you a little bit about the anointing. Number, well, let me tell you three things about the anointing, okay? Number one, you need it. Well, let, let me digress just a bit. You only need the anointing if you're going to be church. If you're going to play church, you don't need the anointing. You need a people-pleasing spirit, a religious spirit, and a political spirit. If you're going to play church, that's all you'll need to really be successful. People-pleasing spirit, religious spirit, and a political spirit. If you're just playing church. But should you want to be church, you must have the anointing. So the first thing, you need it. Second thing, you can't get it from somebody that don't have it. Well, you know, our denomination doesn't believe that. Well, get in another denomination. Why stay in a dead church? Jesus said, let the dead bear the... Come on and follow me. That's what he said. Well, I think I can bring him life. Well, uh, you hadn't been so successful so far, have you? We better get around life, Okay. Get around life. So number one, you need the anointing. Number two, you can't get it from somebody that don't have it. Number three, you can get it. Here's your verse, Psalms 92.10. Psalms 92.10, read it out of anything except the King James. The King James says, you have exalted my horn like the horn of a unicorn. That don't do nothing for me. But it says this fresh oil anointing will release my strength like that of a wild ox. Now I can work with that one. I'll read down the Amplified. You want to? Yeah. Amplified. Psalms 92.10. Amplified version. Here we go. Psalms 90, uh, Psalms 92.10. But my horn, emblem of excessive strength and stately grace, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil. This fresh oil anointing will release authority, and power for the people of God. Let me tell you how much anointing God wants to give you. He wants to give you the same amount of anointing Jesus Christ had. That's true. You know why? John 14, 12. You've been called and commissioned by Christ to do greater works than he did. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes upon me and the works that I do, shall he do also in greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Let's tear that verse apart. John 14, 12. Verily, verily. Was he trying to make the chapter longer? Why in the world did he use verily, verily? Have a st 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 stuttering problem? What in the world is verily, verily? It's a Greek word. It's a courtroom term. If you go into court today in America and you're going to be a credible witness, what's the first thing you have to do if you're going to take the stand? You have to swear an oath. That's what Jesus was doing with verily, verily. It's an oath. Here's what it says. Most solemnly, most solemnly, I say to you, what I tell you is truth and trustworthy. That's the word. And he said it twice. Most solemnly, most solemnly, I say to you, what I tell you is truth and trustworthy. 
Why would he have to put such double emphasis? Because of what he says. These works that I do, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Now let me tell you, he meant that. He meant that we're supposed to be walking in a very, very powerful anointing. I tell you what, I don't believe most Christians know who they are. I believe identity theft is rampant in the body of Christ. Now here's what it says. I'll tell you who you are. You want to know? Here it is, 2 Corinthians 5.20. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, how does it start? There's a little English word, the three-letter word there. First one, N-O-W. Now! Now! I'm screaming. <laughs> now? See, a lot of people are paralyzed by the past. If I could have lived in Wigglesworth Day, if I could have lived in A.A. A. Allen's Day, uh, William Brandon's Day, uh, I appreciate all of them. We... We extract from them all the nectar, all the anointing, all the things that God accomplished. Yes, we esteem them, but we didn't live then. And then some people not only are paralyzed by the past, they're fantasizing about the future. Somewhere out there, mighty world-shaking revival. What about the now? What about this present day now? I want a Hebrews 11, one anointing. Now, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. I suggest the church needs those two things, substance and evidence. What do you think? So here it is, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now are you an ambassador for Christ. Now are we an ambassador for Christ. So if that's who we are right now, I would suspect we ought to study what is an ambassador. When Paul wrote the word ambassador, which we are right now, he wrote the word senior representative sent out with authority. If I am a senior representative and you're a senior representative sent out with authority, Josh, we need to know how much authority do we have? Answer, same amount as the one that sent us. How much authority does he have? Matthew 28, 18. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he turns around and gives it to us. I'll tell you what's going to happen these days. We're going to learn the vast difference between power and authority. We've been power crazy, the church has, for about two decades now. And we've neglected understanding authority. I'll guarantee you, you get divine authority, you'll have divine power. It's true. I'll show you something. You want to see it? Say please. please. Here it is. It's Luke 10, 19. Jesus uses a very stunning word, behold. Behold. It's a forceful word. It means drop everything you're doing. Totally concentrate. Force your focus on what's about to be said. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's what Jesus says to you. I give you authority to negate the devil's ability. That's what he says in Luke 10, 19. Two different words for power. One is authority, one is ability. What ability does the devil have, John 10, 10? The thief comes but for to kill, steal, and and destroy. That's what he's got power to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come to give you authority to negate his ability. Matthew 18 says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound for you in heaven. You believe that? You're going to be shocked at how much power is in you that we don't even recognize. Same amount of power that was in Jesus Christ resides in you. It's true. Because you're supposed to doing this, be doing the same works he did. Oh, man. You know, Bobby, I, I just don't feel strong. Something's wrong with the way you feel. Micah 3.8, remember that verse? It makes a declaration. Surely, absolutely, I am. I'm screaming. Surely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what he said. 
You ought to say that. You ought to have it over your mirror in the, in the morning when you walk into the dressing room. Truly, surely, absolutely, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. You go, well, Bobby, I don't feel it. Well, quit saying that and start saying you're full of power. Pretty soon you'll begin to believe that. Pretty soon you'll begin to walk different. Pretty soon you'll have a confidence about you. What's the difference between a confidence and an arrogance? One is spirit, one is flesh. It's true. I hate to be around fleshly arrogance, but I love to be around spirit boldness. Let me tell you about a spirit bold woman. She died when she was 105. I met her when 1991 in Israel. I don't know how old she was then, but her 72-year-old daughter was with her. <laughs> Miss Davis is her name. She was a 12-year-old slave girl down in Louisiana. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came and appeared to her in a field. When she died, she had properties down in L.A., in downtown L.A. But let me tell you about a very godly woman. She's the one that prayed for Paul Keith Davis and released wisdom on him. He said, I was disappointed. He said, that's how bad I needed her prayer. Little Miss Davis. I'll tell you what happened while I was in Israel, 1991. Uh, Paul Keith, he's a wonderful gentleman. So Miss Davis, a little black lady, very frail. And so he's going to help her. She wanted to walk down the Via Della Rosa. That's a hard walk. And so... She's walking, and Paul keeps helping her down the Via Del, Via Del Rosa. It's a narrow place, quite a bit wider than this pew here, but not big enough for a car. And so Miss Davis is hobbling along with Paul Keith. And I'm standing beside him, and she goes, mm, Don't think me going to make it. I need a cab. Don't think I'm going to make it. I need a cab. When these words, I need a cab, came out of her mouth, so help me God, up at the top of the Via Della Rosa, you hear, dark, dark. that's a horn honking. And you hear all kind of calam cal noise and stuff coming. It's a cab. He's driving up in the shops, knocking down things, back on the street, up on the shops, knocking down things, pull right up to us, roll down his window and said, anybody need a cab here? That's the kind of authority Miss Davis had. Now watch this. The church where she used to attend in L.A., the gangs started coming. Gangs of perch snatchers, thugs, ruffians. The police could not deter them, could not stop them from harassing the members, robbing the members. Guess who they called? So help me God, they called Miss Davis. Over 100 years old. I'm neither lying or this is all the truth. Here's what happened. They call Miss Davis. Miss Davis, a hundred and something years old, comes down to the church. She's little, just weak. And she walks out there to the gang member. She says to him just like this, you know, Jesus is my best friend. He'll do anything I ask him to do. <laughs> this is all the truth. She said to him, if I ask him to kill you right now, he will. <laughs> the gang member lost all of his confidence, fled. They have not been back. Miss <laughs> Davis died when she's 105. But can you imagine that? This is all the absolute truth. See, there's a difference between power and authority. Yes. And I'll tell you the difference, the presence. Getting around him. Staying in him. You know, everybody, and I appreciate it. Psalms 24, 3 and 4 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. But I found out something better than ascending. Abiding. Yeah. Psalms 15, 1. Who may abide in his holy hill? Psalms 15, 1. I want to ascend, but I want to abide. Ascending is visitation. Abiding is habitation. He wants us to have a habitation, guys. I appreciate visitation. Habitation is better. Ephesians 2 said we're a holy house built for the habitation of God. It says the Lord whom you seek will suddenly, Malachi 3, the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Now he's not coming to a mud hut in Israel. He's going to come to you. You're the temple of God. Remember what Paul wrote? What, don't you understand in grass? You're the temple of God. 
What we're, we're trying to identify who we are. Ambassadors. Anointed with power. But the power is for purpose. I want to walk in the authority that God, give us, that God will give us, don't you? He said in Matthew 18, whatever you'll bind will have been bound. I don't think we understand the volume of power that we have. I'm talking about volume. You know what the Lord told me? He said, I shout my truths, but I whisper my secrets. I used to think that if he had something very important to say to me, get me by the chin and go, Bobby! It's right the opposite. It's right the opposite. He told me, he said, it's a sign of my immaturity if he has to shout at me. He said, you ought to be as close to me I could guide you with my eye. Well, it's getting late. <laughs> Saw the light over here. <laughs> That's a good thing. I enjoyed the commissioning service, didn't you? What's your name? Diara. Diara, that's right. You remember, I, I had to try to put a crown on you. I was using tiara, or what is what's, what do queens wear? Tiara, that's right. Well, God bless you. I mean that. That's true. I tell you what God's doing. He's breaking off every spoken word curse over your life. That's a wonderful thing. Every spoken word curse. Lord, I thank you for the redemptive power of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I hear a verse just whoosh by Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will work. And every tongue that rises up against you, you'll be able to condemn it because this is the privilege and the right of the people of God. So that was neat. Well... <laughs> I forgot that y'all were here. You know, I was just, uh, it's true. That's true. That's right. Ah, you go, well, do you have a word for me? All of them. It's true. Book full of them. Lord told me, he said, don't let people use your gift to feed their laziness. You're called to study to show yourself approved unto God. Study the scriptures. Psalms 19. Verse 7 says, the word of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. See, the word of God converts the soul. Have you ever gone into a cafe or a, a, a restaurant and you turn your cup upside down? What is that saying to the waiter? Not receiving what you're serving. The word convert in Psalms 19.7 and eight is that word right there. The word of the Lord converts the soul. It turns your soul back up to receive what God's serving. See, you're born with your soul turned down. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We come out of the womb speaking lies. You don't have to teach a child to be misbehaving and dark. It's in them. It's true. Now, don't go out of here and say, Bobby believes babies are, are going to hell. There'll never be a whimper of a baby in hell. They're safe, not saved. They're safe. It's true. But uh, you're far past that stage. <laughs> well, you've already reached the age of accountability, and God will hold you accountable for how you live. Is that true? Amen. It's true. I, I'm sick of this old smutty, eddy grace. Well, you know, grace covers every offense, brother. Okay, test this one out. Here's little Junior over here. He's 18 months old. He's just a young tyke. Now, this is crude, but it'll help you. Here's a little, Caleb, here's a little old tyke over here. He's maybe 18 months. Just maybe, well, let's just go 15 months. Do they walk at 15 months? Yeah. You know, there, here he comes. He's got his little pampers on. <laughs> he comes right out in the middle of our meeting right here. He's 15 months old. He's a lady to see you. And then all of a sudden he has an accident in his pampers. <laughs> Whoops. That's the fence. Little Junior, 15 months old. Had a problem with his pampers. Somebody's going to have to handle that. Okay? Okay. Scene two. They've carried Junior back. They've dealt with him. But now, here comes his 15-year-old brother. I mean, he's striding out here in his... 
I mean, he's got his designer jeans on. He's kind of excited about being here. <laughs> Whoa! Same offense. Now you need an examination if you think the same process needs to happen with a 15-year-old and a 15-month-old. Maturity demands a higher level. You understand that? But see, there's this mushy, yes, stuff. The grace of God, brother, covers everything. Do you see how crazy that is? If you think it's right for a 15-year-old hawk his jocks, something's wrong. I mean, listen, that boy's retarded. But do you see how crazy that is? Well, I told you it was crude, but it works. And hey, besides that, you're not all that shocked. That's true. Oh, I've never, oh, get real. One thing you can't do is lie to the prophetic. Your thoughts are open and go before you. That's true. And just none of us are, you know, we, we get that little religious, I can't believe it. Yes, you can believe it. Yeah, well, anyway. Well, good. Okay. Two big mess ups. Somebody has to handle that. But we need wisdom, don't we? Different ways you handle it. I think maturity levels demand greater responsibility for our actions. Well, that's right. These boots were made for walking. And that's just what you... Okay. Well, we're going to talk about this anointing. Number one, you need it. Number two, you can't get it from somebody. Number three, you can get it. It's available for us. But it'll cost you. He won't share his anointing with contaminated vessels. Be ye holy that bear the vessels of the Lord. It's true. It has to be brought in on sanctified shoulders. You can't get the ark of God in the Philistine way. Israel learned that, didn't they? What is an ark? The presence of God. What did they try to bring you down? A new cart. The new modern Philistine way. What is a cart? Oh, a couple of big wheels and some boards. Ooh. Think about it. That's how most churches are run. A couple of big wheels and some boards. Oh! oh! Look out now. Well, scared the baby, didn't know. <laughs> the baby go, ooh, I feel that. You can't get the glory in like that. It has to come in on consecrated shoulders. I don't know about you, but I want the glory, don't you? Nothing's more important than the glory. I'll tell you what Moses said. He said, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't carry us one single place. He said, it's only your presence that will make us unique. That's true. Okay. <laughs> it's going to squeal if I get any closer in it. But the sound's much better tonight, isn't it? Amen. No, no, I'm <laughs> Oh, yeah, they'll turn me off now. They go, yes, I was tricking the sound person. <sighs> that's, not a, that's not a nice thing to do, is it? <laughs> to trick the sound person. That's, that's right. Do what? Oh, oh. I forgot all this. <laughs> well, when I get up, I'm started. Do you know what I mean? I start before I get here. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't wait to flip the switch. We got to be instant in season, out of season. I was flying out of Paris one time, big old 747. <laughs> Some people use PowerPoint. I use these verbal <laughs> illustrations. I'm flying out of De Gaulle, big old 747. It pulls up like this. And just as it pulls up like this, it makes a hard right turn. Now, something's wrong with that. The pilot comes on with his little Kesara voice. Well, we've experienced a minor difficulty. We're turning back to the, the airport. Minor difficulty was they lost an engine and another was weakening. <laughs> Honest to God. <sighs> so I'd been over there preaching in, 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 in a 
some conferences. And I said, God! I'm like that. God! What'd you do this for? <laughs> Pull us back. Gonna unload us and take off all the luggage and get another plane. And I'm just mad. I'm late! Anyway. So, as we're getting off the plane, they put us all in one special section so we wouldn't get lost and feral out across the, the airport. And we're in, have you ever seen how many people's on a 747? And they're all in this kind of theater looking style place. And the Lord said, okay, to answer your problem, why did I do this? I want you to stand and preach. I said, God, I don't feel like preaching. He said, you felt like preaching in the conference. He said, I want you to stand here and preach. I'll never forget it. We stood there and lifted our voice and you talk about something. A silence fell on that place and we preached the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. A leading plastic surgeon, a world famous plastic surgeon, walked forward, gave his heart to Jesus and these men and women started getting born again. See, I'd have never preached the gospel on the airplane. But God will, God, will, God will inconvenience you to get his message to a lot of people. You understand that? Yes, sir. -y. Yeah. Yeah. Then they said when they got ready to fly the plane, they said, come on up here and sit with us and tell us some more about this. I go, oh, man, let me get my stuff from coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. True. True. Did I tell you about the chocolate chip cookies? Yeah, I'd bought me a ticket on a Delta plane. I was 37 elf. That's right before the toilet. I'm back there. So help me God, the seat wouldn't even lean back. The, the toilet's there. So I'm going, God, what am I doing back here? But at least I had three seats. I, I was the only person on three seats. So I was kind of settling down a little bit. Plane takes off. We're 33,000 feet up there. And I'm still a little nuffled, you know, but at least I don't, I'm not crowded. And so watch this. Honest to God, truth. Here comes a little flight attendant. She's scurrying by me like this. When she gets even with me, Steve, here's what I scream. Hey, I want some of those chocolate chip cookies. She screams at the top of her voice. Here's what she screamed. You're psychic. That's what she said. I said to her, no, I'm prophetic. God shows me secrets of people's hearts. And she screamed and ran on. <laughs> Honest to God. So I'm sitting there thinking, God, that was strange, strange. <laughs> In a moment, I feel somebody standing beside me. I look, it's her. She's got four hot chocolate chip cookies and two glasses of milk. She said, scoot over. So I scooted over. She let down the, tr the little tray. She sat there. She said, tell me about this gift of knowing all about me. Let me tell you what happened. God un un unfurled her life, showed me everything about her, her husband, her 16-year-old daughter, all the things that were going on inside of her life. She's weeping, crying, and I got four cookies and two things of milk. <laughs> but here's what had happened. She had been up there in first class and they'd been serving cookies and she had four left over. She is smuggling them. She had, she had wrapped them up and stuck them down in her little apron and she's scurrying by me when I go, hey, give me. It's true. That's right. That's how, that's how, it, but it gets better. In a moment, she says, come get your stuff and follow me. And we go up to the big seats. Yep. Four cookies and the big seats. It's true. Absolute truth. That's right. Well, the anointing. It works better out there than in here. It's true. Works better out there than in here. That's right. Well, let me tell you about one time. I was in an airport and I was sleeping. I was laying over there in a chair all curled up asleep. Now, when I sleep, there's sounds and there's stuff. <laughs> In the middle of my snooze, I'm awakened by growling. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's a witch. She spotted me in there and she's manifesting. I'm laying there asleep. I was watching golf, but that'll put you to sleep anytime. He's approaching with a seven heart. <laughs> Honest to God, the witch is circling me, growling. And I go, Jesus! She falls out, squeals. <laughs> Here comes the medics on the little cart. They jump off and I said to them, what you have won't help her. It's true, you know, she didn't need some kind of a, she needed deliverance. You know, but that's the way, you know, I'm telling you, I have, I have exciting times in airports. It's really the truth. Can I tell you one other, airport, one other airplane story? It's the absolute truth. Now, you'll see, you'll see this on the news. I'm, I'm, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I was in a line, and I had me a little, I had an economy ticket, and I'm in the line. I said, Lord, oh, Jesus. I pray you'll bump me up, dear Jesus. It's true. And he said to me, I will. I'm going to put you in first class, but don't do it till I tell you. But when you are told, do it. Say to the person that's in front of you, hey, do you read the Bible? If they say, yes, I do, you say to them, you're going to be like Daniel of old. God's going to give you authority with political leaders that will give them instruction on how to help their people through a dark time. Okay. So I get up there and I said, I'd like to be bumped up, please. And she said, no problem at all. And gave me six F or whatever. That's first class. And I go, that's nice. So I'm sitting over there going, oh, thank you. And then God said, remember, hey, do you read the Bible? Yes, you're like Daniel, Daniel of old. God's going to give you an anointing to help uh, political leaders to lead their people through a very dangerous time. Okay. So I had that memorized. So I get up there and I give them my ticket when they call you to go on the plane. I gave the lady the ticket and she ran it on the little thing. It goes, Eek! and it's, so she said, oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Connor said, they moved you up from 6F to 2B uh, or C, whatever it is. I go, great. If I get another bump up, I'll be flying the plane. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Apparently not very fast, but I'm going. <laughs> Here's what happened. I, I get up there, and uh, I'm sitting right. There's two people there. There's a black man there and a black. There's a black lady there and a black man here. There's an aisle and me and some more people and some more people and some more people. So I, I go, and he goes, no, 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 no. So I go, I'm, fry, I'm flying for free, you know. He said, don't, none of them's the one to do it. So I thought, man, isn't that strange? He told me when I'm this. And so I'm riding, flying along there. We finally land. You remember they go, turn off your stuff, undo your seatbelt, get up and get your junk. So <laughs> ding, the bell rung. So I got up and I'm opening the little overhead thing and I'm reaching for my luggage and somebody reaches over me to get some luggage and I'm stuck. And so I turn around like them, and God goes, yep, that's him. He's about this close. I go, hey. True. Hey, you read the Bible? And it's a wonderful, stunning-looking black man. He goes, yes, sir. I said, you're going to be like Daniel, Daniel of old. God's going to give you an anointing to help political leaders make it through a weary way with their people. And he said, oh, sir, I want to apologize to you. He said, the reason I was struggling to reach the luggage, that's my president. First woman president, she won the Nobel Peace Prize last year, this year now. First woman president of Liberia, and that was her servant. Isn't that something? That was her sitting over there against the window. See, God knows what he's doing. So God was able to give her this anointed, an anointed message through her servant. You understand that? Yeah. that her name's, uh, I forget what her name is. I, well, I got it written down here. Uh, you can Google it if you like. She won the Nobel Prize, uh, her and two other ladies, this year. And let me find it. It's, I got stuff written here. Pick up some milk and bread. No, that's not what's... <laughs> okay. Oh, here it is. Uh, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. She graduated Harvard University. When I met her, she was 67 years old. 
First woman president in, of Liberia. If you, you remember, they went through a great war. She negotiated a peace for him, and so she won the Nobel. See? Say yes. yes. Well, anyway, that's good. The anointing. Isn't it a strange thing that you can receive an anointing? Here's what God told me. He said, I'm going to release an anointing in this place. He told me a long time ago, he said, Bobby, go where I tell you to go. Do what I tell you to do when you get there. I'll give the people, whether they want it or not, an impartation from Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Hebrews 13 and 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting, never-failing covenant, make you perfect. Give you everything you need to accomplish the tasks you've been assigned to do. So he said, I said, God, how in the world can I guarantee these people, even if they don't want it, they're going to get it? Guess what he said? He said, you can get around somebody that's infectious and you can get contaminated. That's true. So you shouldn't have been in their service because you're going to get it. You're, you're going to get an anointing to do what God's called you to do. I tell you, it really, that's really true. You want it? Yes. Well, it's going to get on you anyway. Then you'll be responsible for how you use it. It's true. God's going to give us an anointing to set captives free this year. The Lord told me, said, 2012 is the year I return. I bring back deliverance to the house of God. And he gave me Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's anointed me to set captives free. Well, anyway, let's, let's, I want to pray for you about the anointing, okay? The anointing. We need it, don't we? It's available to us. That's true. How old are you? You told me at lunch. Fifteen. Fifteen. You're one year younger than Mary was when she gave birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Isn't that cool? <laughs> See, we think, well, I'm too young. Youngest king in the Bible was a kid named Josiah. Biggest revival in Israel's history happened under him. Now, who in the world would anoint a kid like that? Eight or nine years old. God? So he sent a prophet 300 years before Josiah's birth and prophesied about his birth and his ministry. Sent a prophet 300 years before he was born. Isn't that cool? I like that. The Bible said all of our works are written in his book. So I suspect what we need is a swift synchronization between his will and our walk, don't you? Instead of just doing our own thing. I want to do what he's commissioned us to do, don't you? Ecclesiastes 3 1 said, There's a time and a season, a purpose for every activity of God under heaven. A time and a season and a purpose for every activity of God under heaven. I want that synchronization, don't you? Jesus had it when he said, I only do what I see my Father doing, I only say what I hear my Father saying. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't worry. Be happy. No, <laughs> Well, we're going to somewhere tomorrow. Y'all are going to have services here. It'll be good. He said, you get to what you're asking for. She asked for uh, an anointing, so you're going to get it. I'll tell you, one of the ways to get it is ask for it. I like Elisha. Got around the most anointed man of his day, and he said, love what's on you, bub, I'll take twice. <laughs> That's what he said. That's true. You get what you're asking for. Scripture records he did twice the many miracles. I found it a little strange verse once. I don't know why we're all fascinated with people's last words before they die. What did he say? So I found the last words of David recorded in the Bible. The last words he said on his deathbed. These be the last words of David, son of Jesse. It didn't say anything about the songs he wrote, the wars he fought. What was paramount in his mind when he was ready to step into eternity was this. The Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. That's what captured his thoughts. The Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. So I think that's pretty important. He could have said all the songs he wrote, all the decisions he made as king, but he said what stands out most in my mind, God spoke through me. That's the kind of anointing we need, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's in the Bible, isn't it? What is it? 2 Samuel 23, 1, maybe? Something like that. It's there somewhere. Somewhere over 
I sing like Louis Armstrong. Well, I love you, darling, you lickings. But I don't have any music. <laughs> you got her set up? <laughs> yeah, he set a trap for me, but the Lord kept me from it, remember? Most time I play on his stuff, so he had it set to go. <laughs> it's true. I get up and make these musicians nervous, don't I? I find that stuff and just turn it on. And there's knobs and buttons. and Man, we got to get out of here. It's late. I'm going to the hotel. I don't know where y'all are headed, but it's going to be okay. It's true. That's right. I heard him say, he will if you will. He will if you will. So I don't even know what the question is, but I know his answer. He will if you will. He will if you will. That's true. Now that sounded pretty intriguing. He will if you will. The Lord said, I'll be with you as long as you want to be with me. That's what he says in the Bible. I'll be with you as long as you want to be with me. That's what he says. That's what he says. See, if God's all this strong, sovereign... God, why don't he make everybody get saved? If he's so sovereign and strong and powerful, why don't he make everybody get saved? I'll tell you why. He wants volunteer lovers. That's what he wants. He wants you to choose him. So he set two trees in a garden, two mountains, blessings and cursings, two roads, straight and narrow. He said to tell you this whole thing has been about choice, not chance. You can choose to turn away from sin tonight. You can choose to turn into a servant of the living God. Choice is up to us. He said, I've set before you blessings and cursings, life and death. He says, choose life. Okay. Saw a whole bunch of stuff fly that away. <laughs> I saw something departing that way. I said, what is that? And he said, migraine headache. So anybody got migraine? God will send it off out into the dry places. Anybody got migraine headache? Raise your hand. God will send it off into the dry places. Lord, I thank you for delivering people from migraine headache. I thank you, Lord, you'll cause it to go out to the dry places. Go out to the uninhabited places. I rebuke migraine headache in the name of Jesus. Send it out. Send it off. Yeah, that's true. Send it out, send it off. Well, if I could just get some Advil. Well, I think the Almighty is better than Advil. Don't you? Well, the anointing. He said, I've given you power. Now he says, use it. Yep. Do you want it? Yes. You want fresh anointing? Yes. I do. Well, do we need it? Yes. Yeah. I tell you what he says, I'll give you wisdom that those that are your enemies can't even start to stand against the divine wisdom God puts in you. Amen. Yeah. Then he says, I'll even make your enemies to be at peace with you. Amen. I tell you about Jesus, he's irresistible. I tell you what he said he's doing. He's alluring us out to the wilderness there to speak to us heart to heart. That's what he says. I will allure you. Study the word allure. I will allure you out to the wilderness. There I'll communicate to you heart to heart. I want God to speak to you tonight in dreams, visions. I love what it says about Peter. He went up on the housetop to pray. As he prayed, he fell into a trance and had a vision. That's about as revelatory as it gets. All right. I have a verse I'll pray for you. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be flooded with revelatory light. You'll have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. You want that? You can have it. I pray the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You'll have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. I pray that your spirit will be enlightened. I pray that the lamp of the Lord will shine bright upon your heart. I thank you, God, that you'll give us those ears to hear and eyes, eyes to see, Lord, ears to hear. You said the hearing ear and the seeing eye, both of these you've created. I thank you. I speak over these people. Matthew 13, 16. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. Say it. I have blessed ears. I have blessed ears. 
I have blessed eyes. Say it again. I have blessed ears. And I have blessed eyes. I will hear. And I will see. That's true. You're going to hear and see in the realm of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak in such a precision, such a precise way. They know it's you, and they'll follow you. They'll follow you. That's true. You feel him wooing you, don't you? Yeah. Stand up. He wants to touch this girl right here. Yeah, yeah, just stand up. Come here. I'll, can I wave my hand by you? It won't hurt you. Just come stand right here. I'll just wave my hand by you. It'll be okay. What's your name? Holly. Hi, Holly. God bless your heart. Here, just take this. Oh, man. Hey, you feel that? And it's legal. Yeah. yeah. People are sniffing, snorting, trying to get it. Here, you can have it. Lord, feel this girl. Just whack her really good. Stand up. Catch this. You ready? Here, take that. You can have it. Yeah. Come here. Let's take a little walk. Yeah. God bless you. On the day of Pentecost, they accused those guys of being something. Remember, the Holy Spirit fell? Yeah. And then the people said, these guys are what? Drunk. Oh, man. <laughs> That's, go That's going to happen. That's true. Hold on. That's the way it happens. See? I'm telling you. Decree a thing. It's true. You want what's on her? You can have it. It's true. Yeah. You want it? Just come stand by. Come here. Come here. Come here. That's good. We get all the ushers drunk and we'll do whatever we want to. Yeah. Grab her by the foot. Just grab her by the foot. Grab, grab that girl's foot. Yeah. The Lord, just whack her. Get her all messed up. She says, whoa, see there? See? See? I don't want a God you can't feel. Do you? Yeah. See there? 16 years old, 15, whatever. Going on about 19. That's what she's, that's a deal. Come here a minute. You're not afraid of me. She goes, that's what you think? No, it won't. Let me see your hand. Well, I'm sweaty. You, here, watch. See, I won't hurt you. Watch this. See there? Didn't hurt a thing. No. Now, can I breathe on your hand? Yeah. Okay, and then we'll put it on your head, okay? What's your name? Amy. Amy, God bless Amy. <laughs> Lord, just bless Amy. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, see, that's good. Then she can't blame anybody, see, did it to herself, see, that's fun, isn't it? Are you not driving a car, are you? Stand up just a second. Oh, Lord, fill this girl. Pour in oil and wine, pour in oil and wine on this girl. That's good. I can feel that. Felt like a... Felt like a saber going. Fush. I see, yeah. What? Look. Yeah. Well, look out now. Lay out now. We ought to mess up the camera guy. That would be fun. Come here, tweet. Tweedledy. Tweedled up. You didn't teach me how to tweet. You were so patient with Patricia. I didn't see anybody go, hey, Bobby, I'll help you. They all go, well, some folks are hopeless, you know. <laughs> no, you can teach me. You know, they told me, get on the cloud. Oh, I don't know nothing about the cloud. But God's going to whack you. God bless your heart. Oh, he's been working so hard, doing all this stuff. Boy, I feel a healing anointing on you too. Isn't that something? I feel a healing anointing on his hands. But Lord, mess him up. I pray the spirit of the living God will come. You, you want angels. You feel angels. Angels are winds. I can feel them coming over my shoulder here. Lord, whack this guy, mess him up for a while. I like that. I can feel that. God's whacked him in the back of the head by the ear. Just hit him in the back of the head by the ear. Yeah. How's it looking up there? Is it looking okay? Good. Everything all right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You know what I like about the Holy Ghost? It says in the Bible, he filled the whole house where they were sitting. That means the cameraman. He filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's what it says. See, a lot of people think he just moves on the front row. 
No. He'll move on this whole row. You believe that? He will. He'll move through this whole house. I feel his anointing on my hand. You want to feel it? Come here. What's your name? Hi, Jean. What do you do, Jean? Huh? Sorry, what did you say? I said, what do you do? You've come here. You want to feel this? Why, well, sure she does. <laughs> see, you can feel it. You can get around it. That's true. Can I see your hand? This one. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. That won't hurt you. Well, it, it will shock you a bit, but it'll be okay. You need it. Lord bless Jean. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, That's good. She goes, my God, stand up. Catch this. What's your name? That's right. Lord bless Elizabeth. Lord, put your wonderful anointing for this girl. She's pursuing you, Jesus. Good. That's good. Just, just let him, he'll just settle in around you. That's true. It's true. Yeah. Remember what I told you? It's true. Breathe him in. Go. There's a verse in the Bible that says he breathed upon them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. It's John 20, 20 and 21. Breathe again. Go. Ooh. Yeah, see, that's fun. Wasn't that nice? I thought I'd get that camera, but I didn't. He just, well, we got to go late now. No, nah, we are. I want to take a, that's a nice camera, though. I better not mess with it. I'm used to them Walmart cameras or Discount City, whatever they quit making. Y'all like, have a Discount City up here? Nah. Big Lots. Y'all got Big Lots? I guess. Here, I, the guy in the yellow shirt, stand up a minute. Come here a minute. He's tall as a tree. What do you do? What do you do? Voiceover. A voiceover? Do you? Good. Yeah. Why well, I was going to use my Morgan Freeman voice. Yeah. Voice over. Lord bless him. See, that was stunning. That felt good, didn't it, Amber? Well, we got to get out here. It's late. I mean, we got to get out of here. You believe it? I've quit three times and hadn't stopped yet. Now, I, you had green shoes. Now you got yellow shoes. I'd get me a pair of pants like that. I had to run fast in Texas. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Yeah. I had to run fast, man. Yeah. I ought to come out and... Hey, the first time I ever preached, I preached with Benny Hinn over in Israel, and I had Zubas on. You know what Zubas are? They're sports pants. They're like pajamas. And I had... I had uh, Cincinnati Bengal sports pants on. They're yellow and red and white striped. Now I'm supposed to preach on Benny Hinn's television program in Israel uh, with him. And the Lord said, wear Zubaz and a shirt, t-shirt. I said, Lord, Benny dresses good. He said, are you dressing for me or Benny? So I wore my Zubaz and a big old t-shirt with an eagle on the front of it. I walked in the room and Benny goes, good God, Bobby, you look like a zebra. That's what he said. That's the first time Paul Keith Davis ever saw him. He started driving seven hours one way to our church after that meeting. Seven hours. He was a businessman then, wasn't a preacher. Isn't that something? Preaching in Zubaz. John the Baptist didn't look that good. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> It'll just get worse. See, you're put together. Good stand up. It'll be all right. What's your, what's your name? Betty. <laughs> what do you do, Betty? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Take a guess. You'll get it right. I serve the Lord. <laughs> serve the Lord. That's a good thing. Hey, let me breathe on your hand. You stick it on your head, okay? <laughs> Lord, oh we, woo, see, 
It's good. It's really good. It's refreshing. That's cool. That's true, isn't it? You need that. The missionary from... Stand up just a second. China. What's... Yes, siri. Lord, I pray for a download for my brother. I pray for seasons of refreshing for him, Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, come and tabernacle on, with him and on him and in him, Jesus. Whew, mess him up. Mess him up. Mess him up. <laughs> Just mess him up. Whoa, see? That's a good mess up. Bart, we got to get out here. Listen. I, who's running this thing? My God, it's somebody. Well, okay. You want this? You can have it. Stand up. You can have it. Here, take this. Listen. Now, that's true. Here, you can have this. Here. Here, here, Curly. <laughs> yeah. Here, do you want it? Lord, touch these people. Touch them for your glory, Jesus. <laughs> yes, Lord. We thank you. He'll, that, see there? He'll mess you up, won't he? Yeah, yeah. You'll get ordained and then messed up all the same night. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, they go, good Lord. That's true. Here, catch this. You ready? Here, you can have it. Just take it. Put your hand on your head. Lord, do that. See? He'll do it. Yeah, take a, take a stand out there. Come on, you'll make it. Give me one big hop out there and see what'll happen. Jump! See? See? That's, that's right. See? Just, well, we got to get out of here. Well, jump, jump. Did you see that? I felt jump. How's the voiceover going? Yes. Yeah. Well, God bless you. Here, you can have this. Lord Jesus, touch your people. Touch your people. Lord, all over this room, all over those watching by internet and television, Jesus, touch them with your wonderful blazing anointing. Holy Spirit of the living God, exalt the Lamb of God. Release wonderful breakthrough anointing for your people. We release angelic power. Lord, thank you. Lord, do what you please to do. In Jesus' wonderful name, bless my sister, Lord. Put your radiant fire upon her, Jesus. Thank you for her. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom you've imparted to her. Lord, I thank you for signs, wonders, and mighty miracles. Lord, bless her. Bless her, Lord Jesus. Thank you for her, Jesus. Well, really, uh, Bart, I, I think it's up to you, man. Good night. <laughs> oh. Oh. Come on, let's honor. Come on. Okay, here, we'll do a little more. If you want to get a book, get it signed, we'll be at the book table for a little while. His plane leaves at 6, so as long as he's through by then, we'll be good. No. Okay. Hey, God bless you. We'll come, come expecting tomorrow. We love you. Good night.